Hello students, welcome to EPG Partshala. I am Dr. Ankita Jain from DSPSR New Delhi. Today we are going to talk on module Collective Bargaining from Paper Human Resource Management. After completing this module, you would be able to define collective bargaining, understand the basic characteristics of collective bargaining, know the various objectives of collective bargaining, understand the various advantages of collective bargaining, put a light upon various types of collective bargaining, learn the process of collective bargaining in detail. Introduction and Definition of Collective Bargaining Collective bargaining is a process whereby organized labor and management negotiate the terms and conditions of employment. Collective bargaining is a process of negotiations between employers and representatives of a unit of employees aimed at reaching agreements that regulate working conditions. Collective agreement usually set out wage scales, working hours, training, health and safety, overtime, grievance mechanisms and rights to participate in workplace or company affairs. Ultimately, the bargaining implies that the process is of haggling, which is more appropriate to one-time relationship such as a one-time purchaser or a claimant to damages. While collective bargaining may take the form of haggling, ideally it should involve adjusting the respective positions of the parties in a way that is satisfactory to all. Collective bargaining is specifically in industrial relations mechanisms or tool and is an aspect of negotiation applicable to employment relationship. In collective bargaining, the union always has a collective interest since the negotiations are for the benefit of several employees. Where collective bargaining is one of the employer but for several collective interests become a feature for both the parties to the bargaining process. In collective bargaining, certain essential conditions need to be satisfied, such as the existence of freedom of association and a labor law system. Further, since the beneficiaries of collective bargaining are in daily contact with each other, Negotiations take place in the background of a continuing relationship which ultimately motivates the party to resolve the specific issues. We can say that collective bargaining is a method by which trade unions protect and improve the conditions of their members' working lives. Let's explore some definitions from different sources. According to ILO, collective bargaining is a fundamental right. The right to collective bargaining forms an integral part of the ILO Declaration of Fundamental Principles in 1998. OECD, that is Organization for Economic Cooperation and Development, WTO, World Trade Organization and the United Nations advocates collective bargaining in similar tones. Collective bargaining is a part of core labor standards, social clause, and global compact respectively. This means further that collective bargaining should be considered as a fundamental right. In majority of the cases, collective bargaining process deals with issues like rate of wages, pay, hours of employment, working conditions, employment policies, and productivity settlement. Today, collective bargaining has assumed a complex nature, conducted in the most formal environment, associating the services of large number of experts, legal practitioners, consultants, and specialized personals. Today it is regarded as a social process because it occurs in a social setting. Characteristics of collective bargaining First, collective. It is collective in two ways. First, for collective interest, workers collectively bargains. 
Second, management and workers jointly arrive at an amicable solution through negotiations. The union is expected to bring out the common consensus on collective issues rather than individual issues. Second, bargaining power. In collective bargaining, the bargaining strength of both the parties across the table is equal. The strength of the union also depends on the demand and supply of working force. Similarly, how much capital is invested upon one worker also determines the ratio of bargaining power. For example, a pilot's union would have more bargaining power than the union of road transport. Because the capita land stake invested on the pilot is much higher than the driver's. Third, representation. The collective bargaining process must be represented by those who have the capacity to take decisions. Fourth, bipartite process. The employees and the employers negotiate the issue directly across the table and there is no third party intervention like pressure groups, legal consultants. Fifth, flexible. Both the parties in collective bargaining should have to flexible mental setup for arriving amicably on a common consensus. Sixth, continuous. Collective bargaining is a continuous process that includes implementation of the agreement and also further negotiations. Seventh, voluntary. Both the parties come in front of each other voluntary in order to arrive at a voluntary agreement which is mutually acceptable to both the parties. And eighth, power relationship. First, both parties want to extract the maximum from each other in collective bargaining. Second, but in order to reach a common consensus, they have to retreat from their positions. For this, both the parties try to reach on a common ground without any serious dilution of their power. Ninth, dynamic. It is a dynamic process because it involves the following. First, implementation process is also ongoing. Second, mental makeup of the parties always keeps on changing. Third, a process of agreement which itself contains various concepts which may change and alter from time to time to be more effective. And last, based on the demand of the situation, various strategies used by both the parties keeps on changing. Objectives of Collective Bargaining There are some basic objectives of collective bargaining on that basis whole process generally work. These are first, settle the conflicts related to working conditions and wages. Second, to protect the interest of the workers through collective action. Third, to resolve the difference between the workers and management through voluntary negotiations and to arrive at a consensus Fourth, to avoid third party intervention in matters relating to employment. And fifth, practically speaking, any issues 
that has any relevance to management and workers becomes the subject matter of bargaining advantages of collective bargaining workers join unions to solve following issues through collective bargaining first desire to have more influence in effective change in the work environment second dissatisfaction with working environment including working conditions compensation and supervision third employees beliefs regarding the potential benefits of unions various other advantages of collective bargaining are collective bargaining is a form of participation because it involves a sharing of rule making power between rule making power between employers and unions in the areas which in earlier times were regarded as management prerogative example transfer promotion redundancy b collective bargaining agreements often institutionalize settlement through dialogue for instance a collective agreement may provide for methods by which disputes between the parties will be settled in that event parties know beforehand that if they are in disagreement there is an agreed method by which such disagreement may be resolved c collective bargaining has the advantage of settlement through dialogue and consensus rather than through conflict and confrontation agreement resulting from collective bargaining usually represents the choice or compromise of the parties themselves d collective bargaining agreements sometimes renounce or limit the settlement of disputes through trade union action e collective bargaining is an essential feature in the concept of social partnership towards which labor relations should strive social partnership in this context may be described as a partnership between organized employer institutions and organized labor institutions designed to maintain non confrontational process in the settlement of disputes which may arise between employers and employees f in societies where there is a multiplicity of unions and shifting union loyalties collective bargaining a consequent agreements tend to stabilize union membership g collective bargaining is the most important and effective in improving industrial relations h collective bargaining has a valuable by product relevant to the relationship between the two parties types of collective bargaining in bargaining situations demands are pitched higher than what one would really settle for and offers are initially made lower than what one is really prepared to give on the other hand it's a charter in which some major and some minor demands consist all these variations in bargaining can be divided in three types these are first distributive bargaining distributive bargaining is the most common type of bargaining and involves zero sum negotiation in other words one side wins and other side loses union employees may try to convince management that they will strike if they don't 
get the wages or working conditions they desire. Management in turn may be willing to try to ride the strike out, especially if they have cross-trained other workers or have external replacements to fill in for those on strike. In this bargaining, union and management have initial offers or demands, target points, resistance points, and settlement ranges. Second, integrative bargaining. Integrative bargaining is similar to problem-solving sessions in which both sides are trying to reach mutually beneficial alternatives. Both the employer and the union try to resolve the conflict to the benefit of both parties. Third, concessionary bargaining. It involves a union's giving back to management some of what it has gained in previous bargaining. Why would labor be willing to give back what it worked so hard to obtain? Usually such a move is prompted by labor leader who recognize the need to assist employers in reducing operating costs in order to prevent layoffs and that motivates concessionary bargaining. Process of Collective Bargaining Howard Law School's program on negotiation describes the collective bargaining process as comprising five core phases. First, preparation and framing. In this phase, both the school board and the union examine their own situation in order to develop the issues that they believe will be most important, including assessing your interest as well as the interest of the other side. Second, bargain over how to bargain. Here, the parties decide the ground rules that will guide the negotiations. This is where the logistics are determined, such as the rules for secrecy and the frequency of negotiating meetings. Third, opening and exploring. This phase involves the initial opening statements and the possible options that exist to resolve them. In a word, this phase could be described as brainstorming. Fourth, focusing and agreeing. This stage comprises the time when what ifs and proposals are set forth and the drafting of agreements take place. And fifth, implementation and administration. This stage is described as consisting of effective joint implementation through shared visions, strategic planning and negotiated change. More classified process of collective bargaining. We can also classify the process of collective bargaining in following phases. First, developing a bargaining relationship. One of the very important facets which need to be considered before studying the process of collective bargaining is understanding and developing a good bargaining relationship. This step consists of these activities namely a recognition of the bargaining agent. In those organizations where there is a single trade union, that union is generally granted recognition to represent the workers. But where there is more than one union, any of these criteria may be used for identifying the representative union, namely selection of the union by secret ballot, 
selection through verification of members by some government agency if required bargaining with a joint committee of all major unions bargaining with a negotiation committee in which different unions would be represented in proportion to their verified membership bargaining with a negotiation committee which consists of elected representatives of every department of the organization selected by secret ballot irrespective of the union affiliations b levels of bargaining collective bargaining is possible at all levels such as at the level of the enterprise it may be at the level of industry in a particular region at the level of the entire industry in the country that is at the national level from the point of view of an individual establishment enterprise level bargaining is generally useful in the sense that the settlement is tailored to the conditions of that organization c scope and coverage of collective bargaining though in many organizations bargaining is struck only by specific issues like wage increase bonus or seniority promotion etc yet it is considered advantageous both for the management and the trade unions to cover as many issues of interest to both parties as possible nowadays the orientation of collective bargaining is changing from conflict to cooperation and thereby building an atmosphere of trust progress and social welfare d process variation of collective bargaining the negotiation process has been visualized in different ways collective bargaining procedure can be compared with the similar to an exercise in politics where the relative strength of the parties stems from decisiveness and that it resembles with a debate they are also of the view that both the parties on the bargaining table become entirely flexible and willing to be persuaded only when all the facts have been presented however the increasing maturity of collective bargaining there has been enlargement of rational process in addition several other factors also influence the negotiation process among these factors some are mentioned below first objectives of the parties second kind of experience knowledge the parties have third the industrial legislation of the concerned country fourth the personalities and training of negotiators fifth the history of the labor relations in the enterprise sixth the size of the bargaining unit and seventh the economic environment preparation for negotiation prior to the actual bargaining sessions enough care should be taken by both the parties to have a thorough preparation for the negotiations this has become a prerequisite to collective bargaining in view of several reasons consultation with the lower level members of their respective organizations can help both the parties to obtain valuable information and evolve specific bargaining table approaches the consultation process also increases the morale of the two organizations again the technical assistance of legal and public relations expert can also be utilized gainfully in the collective bargaining process finally care should be taken to pre-plan with mutual consent the meeting places ground rules relating to transcripts of the sessions publicity releases and the payment system of union representatives and allied issues negotiation stage 
Methodology for bargaining is very important in negotiation process. It will help the negotiator to develop those personal and managerial qualities of preparedness, knowledge, ability, sensitivity, timing, analytical abilities, composure and patience. These qualities develop as a result of observation, experience, involvement, and conscious individual effort and experience. As a bargaining methodology, it is desirable to list all the bargaining items, whether introduced by the employer or the employee, that the parties will consider during the course of the collective bargaining negotiations. These bargaining items could be separated into two parts. First, the cost of financial items and second the other or non-cost or non-financial items. Collective Agreements A. Procedure Agreements Procedure agreements spell out the steps by which the industrial relations process are carried out. Procedure agreements are collective agreements which relate to machinery for consultation, negotiation or arbitration on terms and conditions of employment or for any other matters which arise between trade unions and employers. Negotiating rights, facilities for trade union officials and disciplinary matters and individual workers' grievances. B. Substantive agreements. These contain the substance of any agreement on terms and conditions of the employment. They cover payments of all kinds, that is, wage rates, shift allowances, incentive payments, holidays, and fringe benefits. C. Mixed procedural substantive agreements. The distinction between procedural and substantive agreements, while useful, does not always apply in practice. It is possible to have both substantive and procedural elements in the same agreement. There is, however, a tendency for procedural agreements to have a separate and long-term existence and consequently they are not subject to a great deal of alteration. On the other hand, substantive agreements are altered from time to time to take account of ongoing negotiations. So students, let us summarize what we have learnt in this module. Collective bargaining emerged initially has been purely matter between the plant level union and the plant management. The negotiations either at the state or at the industry level are yet not frequent. The collective bargaining has not decentralized beyond the plant level because craft unions are absent. There are three important reasons as to why collective bargaining has not gone beyond the plant level. A. The varying sizes not permit uniform employment conditions. B. The absence of homogeneous labor market owing to lack of uniform skills and pattern of training which does not promote free mobility of labor market owing to lack of uniform skills and pattern of training which does not promote free mobility of labor so that uniform development conditions could be evolved for the industry as a whole. And C. The plant union leadership which at present enjoys enormous power are faces prospects of political climb is reluctant to get integrated into an industry-wise union where its power are likely to be restricted. Thank you.